Uh, topic of this talk is opt out or deauth trying. It's going to be anti uh, tracking bots, radios, and keystroke injection. So it's going to be throwing off brick and mortar stores, um, the ways that they're tracking you, um, everything from billboards um, down to the basic uh, analytics and information that Google collects when you do searches and things of that nature. All the slides in one second here. Sweet. I'll get this play in here. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Now you guys have visuals to go along with it. So, as I said, my name is Weston Hecker. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. I do a lot of research during the year and I uh, love helping people with projects and just security research in general. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail. We'll make it a little bit quick here. Um, yeah, myself, I'm 32, I work for NCR, I live in North Dakota. Any other North Dakotans? No? Okay. <laughs> There's probably six of us. Yeah, okay. There's one or two of them. Uh, I've spoken at, this is my fourth year in a row speaking at DEF CON. Uh, spoke at Hope, um, Black Hat last year, lots of conferences. So I love getting out, meeting the community. That's the reason I do these talks, is to meet people like you guys. So, And I've been doing uh, 12 years pen testing professionally and uh, 13 years of research, programming, things along that. And I uh, did a lot of ATM, car hacks, um, several IoT projects going on right now, uh, reverse engineering malware, things like that. Um, I'm going to be doing a cool uh, attack on vehicle. The, anybody has a push button start car, you should definitely come down to the car hacking village. I'm going to demo um, uh, how to stop the relay attacks where we, basically people are using software defined radios to actually steal vehicles. So I'm going to go into how the actual attack works, then I'm going to go into uh, some two-factor authentication that I added that's built on a $12 Arduino project, so it's very cool. And uh, a little bit about this research and what led to it. Uh, so as you can see, Microsoft uh, Windows 7 end of life was all announced, and uh, I mainly use Linux, uh, like a majority of the people here probably do, but I'm forced uh, to use uh, Windows for some applications. And I had a quick uh, question I called one of my buddies, and I'm sure everybody has that buddy, that you call them for a simple question about uh, uh, pro uh, some concerns or things like that, and they'll uh, talk your ear off about chemtrails for the next hour and a half. So <laughs> he's a very, very paranoid guy. Um, he's usually right, though. Uh, he's uh, added uh, validity several times when I've talked to him. So and he's helped me with uh, tons of my research, especially my uh, cell phone hacking one I did in uh, DEF CON 22. So, but yeah, that's what basically led to this research. Is I started uh, installing Windows 10 on most of my machines. And uh, yeah, <laughs> explains uh, what systems I've used in the past, uh, how they do in-store tracking, operating systems, uh, s switching to Windows 10, like I was saying, which is kind of a scary, scary thought, and uh, searching, search engines, spying uh, uh, Google. I know they track all your analytics. Uh, Bing probably does too, but nobody uses it. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go into actual uh, billboard spying. Um, there's a couple of prototype billboards, and I'm pretty sure I fried the one in Minneapolis on 169, uh, I was doing some research on it. I had permission at that time, so it's uh, something that they want, they're, they're actually tracking vehicle TPMS sensors, so tire pressure monitor sensors, and they're profiling people off of vehicles and the actual advertisements, so. And yeah, yeah, that's pretty interesting stuff. So um, uh, just privacy is disappearing, so I thought I'd do a privacy talk, and uh, yeah. Explanation of the targeted personalized advertising. So I'm gonna go through a lot of the advertising um, personalized ads, um, they're getting really, really creepy. They got really creepy for a while there and then they realized that people were getting creeped out and they kind of backed them off a little bit. Um, beh behavior advertising, cookies, um, I'm gonna go into, they track you on basically what your hobbies, automotive, electronics, travel, where you've been, things like that. Um, collection of non-identifiable information, so they tell you that it's a lot of it's metadata, but there's been plenty of talks in the past of how to reverse uh, metadata, there was actually some medical ones where they had people that had um, diseases and things like that, where they were actually to reverse, able to reverse those two specific people once there was an actual uh, breach. So, yeah, and the uh, real-time bid information, which is one of the buzzwords that's out there. So basically, people are buying us like we're cattle, and uh, uh, this is basically geared at jacking up every single analytic they use for it and making the data completely useless. And uh, yeah, so they have software advertising displays, um, uh, private marketing, uh, PMP. Uh, basically wasting um, advertisers' money. And yeah, there's an explanation of technology of tracking online, so I'm gonna go through some of them. I'm gonna explain how deep and dive in the operating systems are, and when you try to uh, neuter uh, Windows 10, how it fights back, because <laughs> it is a, a very, 
very intrusive operating system. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, what to be expected. We, you know, they were pushing a lot of those updates and stuff like that. So uh, how it impacts the users, how it impacts the business. Um, I know that's something where I don't mind if, you know, they know what my mother is doing on a day-to-day -day basis, or I'm sure she doesn't either. But when it's your actual employees, um, if anybody's in a sysadmin or security uh, admin role, and uh, it makes a lot of these column services um, hard to track, especially when we're trying to see if things are calling out or Trojans or droppers or any kind of malwares calling out and stuff like that. It adds a lot of tra unnecessary traffic. And I'm going to go into GPS tracking I, off of IP addresses. Uh, so on the whole, they'll track what an entire company is doing if they have one IP address. So Wi-Fi, uh, beacon information, so how they uh, actually go through cellular tracking and um, um, turn on Wi-Fi for accuracy. Obviously, uh, everybody has their Wi-Fi off here, but uh, there's, you know, on, in the average world, when you're walking around the mall, it's amazing some of the information they collect. And uh, yeah, arts, entertainment, this is some of the actual breakdowns of how ads are personalized and uh, sales of it. It's very, very boring stuff. I, I feel <laughs> that I don't need to go into too much detail on this, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have uh, done a lot of research on actually running ad blockers or black holing advertisements. Um, I recommend that for everybody, not only just for security purposes, but even legitimate web pages can have drive-by attacks. Um, there's several exploit kits that um, um, have, have had drive-bys in the past on legitimate web pages, place, pages that I would visit without any hesitation normally. So, and yeah, so there are some uh, good ways to stop tracking uh, right now, and I just wanted to uh, give a plug to some of these. are all open source. Uh, they're all free. Um, so they have ad blocker apps. Um, they have um, actual black holes, which basically the advertisers don't know that their ads aren't being showed, which is a little more stealthy. Um, Track Me Not is the uh, actual hypervisor version that I wrote as a plugin for um, uh, the uh, actual program that this IO address. It's pretty amazing. It literally crawls the entire web uh, web page that you send it to and will click all the advertisements in a safe manner, obviously. Uh, but it basically jacks up a lot of it. And I actually added a hypervisor version because they banned this plugin on Chrome. So I got it so it's working on Chrome again, and it actually does um, uh, uh, lots of XML injection or um, a keystroke injection into the actual browsers themselves. So it's something where um, it happens at a layer where you're not going to trigger a lot of the uh, I'm not a robot and a lot of security features. So that is something I'm also releasing open source, and it'll uh, I'll have a working version for uh, VMware that uh, once it's out of the beta phase here, everybody will be able to download it, and if, as long as you have VMware Workstation or um, uh, some of the open source ones will also work for it. So the OVAs you'll be able to launch them and. Uh, I'll go into a little bit of the uh, other things that I'm actually blocking from Microsoft. So, and uh, yeah, the e uh, privacy badger is a really good one. EFF loves supporting them. Uh, there's paid VPNs, uh, four dollars a month. You can get a decent VPN service. Um, some of the free ones, who knows what they did? It's uh, probably worse than uh, letting them know you're advertising. Is some of the stuff that those IP addresses were previously used for. So that's something that I would uh, definitely recommend that you do your due diligence when you're checking into that stuff. So, and it's all a very good start. Um, tackling some of the call homes. Um, doing a uh, actual blocker on the host's files, so it blocks a lot of the uh, Microsoft call home type stuff, uh, turning off your peer-to-peer -peer networking um, for updates and stuff like that. So, and uh, what do I have against ads, Weston? That's, a, uh, that's what my wife asked me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's something, um, I don't mind at all. I hate having advertisements. Anytime they offer something like a, a YouTube Red or something like that where it'll, they still collect a lot of information, but it's something where if I don't have to see an advertisement, I will gladly pay for it. I'm not trying to, uh, that's the way that the internet is free, I understand that. Um, it's all, I will, I will gladly pay for a lot of the uh, premium services. And anything that's ad free, and uh, even some of the Android stuff, it's uh, amazing that you can't actually you know, turn off a lot of the tracking, and it's something that, um, as the more and more, they, they snag you with the convenience, and then they add some of the more intrusive stuff, and that's just been happening over uh, the last few years, so. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna be able to, um, should go into some, yeah, uh, disable some of the browsing tracking. They let you know there's cookies. They try to do all these things to let you know uh, what they're doing or make you make them look like they're more of an accurate and good demonstration of what they're actually doing. But uh, in a lot of cases, um, it, it needs a little bit more intervention, and that's why I love that there's uh, tools like on these last page here that people can actually go out and do this kind of stuff. So, and yeah, so basically drive-by attacks, like I was saying, even legitimate web pages, um, uh, there's a lot of them that, even the New York Times is one of the bigger ones that comes to mind. Um, that page, they uh, literally sent out Twitter saying that their actual uh, page is breached, please don't visit it. So, uh, and they had, that was a drive-by, I believe that was a Java or a Flash drive-by attack, so it was literally just by visiting the page, it would uh, actually execute some of the code on there. So, uh, since the late 90s, it's been one form or another in tracking, and uh, they're, um, yeah, they're di deep diving, they're getting their analytics more tight, and uh, it's, 
been used in stores, uh, the, actually the brick and mortars. I'm sure everybody, you know, 2012 heard about these, you know, they're tracking everything. And the stores that were doing it got a lot of feedback that was negative, so they quit doing it. And then they tried it again two years later, <laughs> and uh, they're right back up to the same old tricks. So that's something where um, in in-store analytics, it's no problem at all, I have no problem at all if people opt into it. Um, that's definitely something like if somebody wants to save 10%, 10 cents on their gas or something, by all means, if that's something they accept, I have no problem at all with that. But it's when um, uh, they actually you know, start tracking cellular beacons of how many customers walk by, their retention rates, their dwell times in the store, and things like that. I'll actually go into some heat mapping analytics and things like that, so. But yeah, it's a, uh, yeah. I have no problem at all with opt-in programs, that's one of the biggest things. So they uh, track some of the Bluetooth, cellular beacons, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, infrared, and motion sensors. Um, yeah, several years they begin getting negative press, like I said, so uh, there's been lots of uh, resistance in all forms of tracking. Apple and a couple other several manufacturers are doing uh, very, very randomized beacon information, which is awesome to see, and uh, it's definitely been a long time coming for it. So uh, UK and other uh, areas in the world have been less resistant from what I've seen. Um, I know a lot of the um, actual tracking that they have out there is pretty, pretty readily available. So, and told, it's been turned into metadata, and I've already explained about some of the weaknesses in metadata and reversing it. And uh, this is the $45 device that uh, every single one of you should bring and go to the mall with you every time. Because uh, this actually, uh, basically what it is, it's, it's a huge uh, wireless beacon generator, and it actually can generate up to 150 beacons, um, and they can be one of several things. They can either be, um, so they can either be uh, cellular beacons, so they make it look like a customer's walking around, they can actually be rogue access points, they can be pretty much anything that you can generate cellular with a laptop, you can now generate with these, and uh, I actually have a program called Groundhog's Day where it replays the exact same days worth of traffic, so it looks like the same people are walking by, and uh, <laughs> It is a pretty neat, neat, neat process. It actually jacks up their uh, in-store analytics, their retention rates, all the heat mapping, because uh, uh, with the more advanced version with the actual Raspberry Pi attached to it, you can um, actually change where people are dwelling in the store and stuff like that, so it's a really, really cool project. And that's all gonna be open source MIT license. I'll release how to actually build one of those. Um, I highly recommend it. They're pretty fun uh, if you haven't played with wireless before, so. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, thank you. And uh, metadata is used to change the store layouts. So say for example, if uh, everybody goes to the front panel, they're gonna you know, start throwing the more high price items there, things like that. Um, if they realize everybody's going back to electronics right away, they're gonna put a lot of stuff to try to sell people on the way there. And the more specific lay layouts increase sales and make us more along the lines of uh, just consumers. So, and using regards programs, um, yeah, like I said, opt-ins, I have no problem at all with that. Uh, I did a little research on some of the coupons that are pushed and some of the actual Bluetooth tracking. Um, those things are literally built for like the year 2023. They're uh, not impossible to break, but uh, I did not have the, time, the free time this year to actually start dabbling with those. Uh, last year, I actually did um, some uh, ticket injection, but I did a responsible disclosure with it. So it's something where I wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't work anymore, so nobody would really care <laughs> for the majority of it. So, so they increase how much they, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, here we go. And uh, yeah, so it basically increases how much they can charge for certain store areas if people have it in there. So, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the brave soul who told me to bring it up a little closer. So, uh, yeah, so it changes the ad placement in the physical and the web because they're tracking cross platforms. So, and yeah, collection of all the cellular uh, Bluetooth beacons. So, they're collecting all the, the ESN information. Um, they have actual, they've weaned away from this one big time because it's very, very intrusive and um, some of them have pretty decent ranges on them, so um, they're not as um, acceptable for as far as if people are going through actual uh, communication with them, so. And uh, how do you harden the communication best practices? Um, yeah, that's something I'll be going through in here a little bit, so. And uh, who knows what TPMS sensors are for vehicles? Yeah, there's been lots of really, really cool research. Um, uh, so they have smart billboards. Uh, they just throw the word smart in front of it and charge people for it, but it's something where they're gonna basically be tracking beacons, they'll be able to profile that you know, that, that guy driving that 2015 Jeep Cherokee or whatever, they'll be able to tell that that person's most likely a white 32-year-old male, and they'll be able to uh, uh, get more of the advertisements, or they'll be able to, you know, uh, generalize how much they actually are able to charge for some of the information, be able to track people a lot more. And uh, in the U.S., uh, after 2007, they required it in a majority of the vehicles, except for special pur uh, purpose-built vehicles. Uh, so basically, it uses unencrypted RF, um, three, uh, 314 uh, majority of it, so depending on the actual vendor. Anytime you go over 19 miles per hour, it'll do a call home feature. So, And uh, I'm gonna be actually 
uh, demoing the, uh, in the car hacking village, I have a TPMS sensor where you can actually add three sets of tires to your vehicle. So that's something that Ford owners have not been able to do without going to a dealership all the time. So it's something where you can have your snow tires, racing tires, but I, uh, and then your, um, you know, whatever other, other tires you want. Um, and something that um, I actually made it so my wife, wife's vehicle, every time it starts up, it'll actually generate a new uh, TPMS sensor and it'll flash it into her CAN bus. So it'll, it's pretty hard to actually track the vehicle. And it's just uh, one step further. Uh, hopefully people will adopt those kind of things uh, once they start tracking more of that beacon information. So, and uh, yeah, that right now that's one of the majorities of that they're actually testing. And I'll be doing a demo of that on the actual car hacking village. So, yeah, and everybody's, uh, for the most part, I don't need to go into social media. Uh, that is literally just, that is pretty much nothing but data collection. Um, there's been several jokes. I love one of the Onion ads where they had Mark Zuckerberg as like an FBI agent. And that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, they got some pretty accurate stuff like that. And it's uh, abuse in the past. Um, it's just, they're literally just tracking everything on it. And it's it's something that we they willingly accept to be able to, you know, send cat memes and things like that to each other. So, and uh, reversing the randomness. So when I went through the actual pages, it was pretty simple. I would start with a dummy account on a BPS, and I would start searching uh, specific dialogues um, of things that I would think that people's personalities. I would think of a friend, and then I would think of things that they would search. And I would think of that age right now. I would think of like my niece, what she would search, what my cousin would search, what my uncle would search, a lot of that stuff. So that's something where I was kind of looking at what they were reversing and what they were advertising with. So I built out a huge uh, spreadsheet that is actually gonna be something else I'll be releasing with these tools. Um, and it basically shows that what, what, what's your profile and how to build a profile. Because that's actually what the uh, program that I made is you can set yourself to, say for example, the example I was giving was a 12 year old girl who likes horses. And uh, you, you'll be looking how to flash um, a firmware on an Uber Tooth One, and the next thing you know, she, you're searching, if he, does he like me? You know, where are the best horse ranches? Things like that. So you'll be able to throw in some pretty random details. And it's actually a plugin for uh, that amazing program that I was talking about earlier. Um, they, they do a very, very good job at random stuff, but uh, some of the random stuff gets thrown into unlogical bins where they don't even get advertised to or they get very, very low resale. So these actually keep you looking like a real person on the web uh, because eventually when enough people start using blocking services like that, they're gonna start actually de diving a little bit more into the actual uh, details and the software of it, so. And yeah, back in the old XP days, uh, they really didn't store, store much information. <laughs> and uh, yeah, 1984, style moving into Windows, it's literally amazing the uh, amount of information they collect. And I've been a huge fan of uh, doing misinformation type talks, like the, the one that I actually did was um, uh, injecting fake credit card numbers for credit card skimming software. So like it's like, it's all about like, if I can't have my data, nobody can kind of situation. So it's like if it becomes so useless, they won't actually want it anymore. And that's kind of the thought and the process behind it. And yeah. An explanation of attack, so blocking the billboard spying, uh, I'm going to go through that with the TPMS sensor, and uh, explaining the actual main attack surface of the passive monitoring systems. So how brick and mortar stores are spying on people, and how web and OS are spying on people, so that'll be the next phase of this. And uh, so methods stopping billboard spying, so it's billboards, they're, t oh, they're picking up, well, this, this microphone, I apologize really here, so. <laughs> So smart billboards, they capture the wireless sensor information. Uh, they capture all of it based on the model, year of the car, the age range, income range. Uh, if you're driving a brand new Lexus, you're most likely not a McDonald's employee. And they like to profile it like that. And that's just one of the, one of the more things where it dehumanizes a lot of the information. So, and uh, passive and opt-in programs, once again, like I said, uh, people will have a lot of applications for tracking through a lot of the actual mobile, uh, uh, public transit systems and stuff like that. So. And like I was saying, uh, you can add um, a lot of the not necessity of having to go into a dealership, which is really, really nice because um, uh, Ford and Lincoln vehicles is the one that I have the tool working for now. And uh, it's nice to be able to actually install um, uh, like a Groundhog's Day type situation. So you cycle through. The one that I have that would be more practical is adding 10-tire uh, TPMS sensors and cycling through them. Uh, so that's something where it's not randomly generating them because uh, that is a little bit more of a lengthy process, especially um, uh, about once a week you have to actually do a hard flash uh, to actually add some of your TPMS sensors, so. And yeah, so what's being collected and what allowed them to uh, profile me online, that was one of the, the biggest things that was uh, the collection of the information once I logged it all. Uh, it's something that, it was pretty interesting um, what s slight changes would uh, change in advertisements and uh, things along those natures, especially when you would start getting, getting into higher profile travel. Um, you can also see where people are spending a lot of the money uh, for actual click-to-pay advertisements and stuff like that. So uh, how do they use it? Uh, who, who's it interested to? Who's buying it? Uh, how's the information held against people? They've uh, done, there's actual FBI portals uh, and things like that for 
you know, a lot of this information so they don't have to actually submit warrant, or they have to do warrants and everything like that. They do the, the due process. It's just something that they actually have to, uh, yeah, they have to keep it up, so. And how is the, yeah, all the information for portals for law enforcement, uh, one of the biggest ones I've known is the, the ones for actual cellular communications, so. And yeah, um, so basically injecting the false data, uh, changing your profile, um, how much information do you have to do to combat your years of uh, profiling? Um, one of the biggest things I did a couple of years ago was I started like three Google accounts so and then I switched in between them, didn't even trick them because of a lot of the information that they picked up, they still profiled it as the same person. Um, so I'm gonna go into a little bit of the profile changing and actually throwing off some of the lower level analytics. And uh, who knows what type fisting is? <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, oh, like a World War II, they used to have people that when they'd uh, tap the actual Morse code and stuff like that, it was something where they would be able to tell where somebody was in Germany based on the actual way that they typed their information. And that's one of the actual analytics that uh, Windows 10 is collecting. So that's part of that hypervisor that I built, is it actually collects your, a lot of your keystrokes and actually injects them out and into the operating system or whatever your selected tab is at uh, for, uh, 38. You can select the gross words per minute depending on how fast you type, but it basically pops it out so there's no type fist. So they can't tell if it's you using your computer or your wife using your computer. And uh, there's a couple other uh, ways that you could do a lot of this stuff. Um, it can be used for injection of typing. Um, you can do um, working on mouse click uh, emulation and simulation that is undetectable and things like that. So it'll be a, a pretty decent project once it's uh, complete. So, and then we're gonna go th through the browser bot and uh, how to not get det uh, detected by search engines and web browser programs, that was one of the biggest things. Uh, right away it was, uh, kept busting me and it just was a little disheartening at first, so. But yeah, uh, so yeah, a lot of the, um, I'm not a robot, uh, who, who saw that originally thought, like how hard can that be to beat? And then they tried to beat it. <laughs> yeah, it's actually <laughs> a pretty well thought out process. Um, uh, so a lot of the, it's not just about the clicking, it's about the naturalness of how it is clicked. So that's something where um, if you're able to push mouse clicks from a hypervisor, um, it's a lot more uh, accurate in detail and you can tune it a lot better. And it also makes it so that everybody can use it. You don't have to have low level details of actually how to um, program a lot of the stuff, so. And yeah, so yeah, you can basically um, go through the joys of watching your advertisements change firsthand. You can throw off your analytics a little bit and um, based on your actual advertisements, you can reverse that to what they profile you as. And it is actually pretty creepy. Uh, based on the actual database information, you can actually see that they know that you're, you know, in your mid-30s and you love vehicles and computers or whatever your uh, things are. So there's ways to actually go uh, the reversing process. It's, it's a pretty decent process. If you guys haven't ever mapped anything out like this, um, search engines are really, really easy to do. And it's uh, definitely something if you're wanting to get in a data project with some of your friends, so. And yeah, basically, uh, yeah, this malware can actually be used to uh, do bad things. So you could actually, uh, like a hypervisor like that, I was looking at that where somebody can actually use it as frameware. They can make people visit bad web pages, things like that. So that's one more reason that you're gonna wanna integrate something that will uh, keep track of what your actual analytics are and what it's actually conveying. And you could actually frame somebody. Uh, it could basically damage somebody's life or even worse, it could like Nickelback on Facebook, so. <laughs> I just had to bash on Nickelback because yeah, they're the worst, worst thing to come, so, but yeah. And uh, there's basically, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's also used um, if you want to do some testing for malware. Uh, a lot of the malware looks to see if the virtual machine is used, and it's something where you can get some actual um, real, real world case usage. Um, I know it's something to, uh, without paying, you know, $50,000 for their uh, really expensive VMs that are specifically for reversing malware, it's something where you can make uh, virtual machines look like they have daily usage in them. So if it's something where you want to kick a payload off or it kicks off three weeks later or something, you'll be able to actually do a little bit more research on it, so. And yeah, basically it's the operating systems and uh, yeah. So how I tried to make Windows 10 uh, go off the grid kind of uh, was basically by, you know, originally doing some of the hosts, seeing what it's calling out to. Um, others have done that in the past, others have failed. Um, I failed the first few times I did it. Um, there's actual very, very good tools out there for blocking a lot of these, they get turned right back on as soon as you run an update though. So that's something where uh, I'll be uh, posting some of that research and uh, a little bit more about uh, a deep dive into the operating systems of, because uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are adopting either for your actual users or for your actual self, uh, switching over to Windows 10 from Windows 7 and uh, actually injecting from the hypervisor and how much information the actual uh, OS detects before like a lot of the um, errors and issues and things like that, it'll actually submit those. Um, and there's uh, pretty much anything that is getting sent home to Microsoft, I have made a way to send them bullshit. So it is a pretty fun, fun, it was a fun project and it was a, I loved watching the actual responses of it, so. 
And uh, yeah, IP version six, how it changes spying on us, uh, some of the real time communication. Um, that is, uh, yeah, some of it for as far as like breaking um, anonymity on the web, there's lots of actual information out there for it. So yeah, screen, sizer, uh, screen size and browser information, that was uh, one of my bigger breakthroughs when I was um, going through how they're actually uh, tracking a lot of the um, details from some of the post and get requests and things like that. So, and uh, type fisting is something that, um, yeah, it's basically uh, something in Windows 10. They've been uh, collecting, I don't see any reason that they would need to do that, uh, aside from per user basis. Um, there's some pretty cool uh, research on people like being able to lock machines if they feel that somebody else is like typing at the machine or something like that. Uh, so I've seen a couple of programs like that and a type testing app would be able to be a pen testing tool for something like that, but, but yeah, no, so uh, we do the XML, um, HTML injection, uh, yeah, and it's basically a macro-based injection. So um, I had the most simple, simple version of it is Ghostwriter. If you want it to literally inject things out of a, a text file, you can do that. Um, you can use some of the plugins for some of the other applications that are out there. And uh, yeah, there's, like I said, it interacts with other programs by um, if they're brought to the front or if they're the selected window, and you can change a lot of the functionality with that. Um, there are some CV plugins that people have um, for desktop support uh, applications that I'll also be posting and referencing to. So, um, and can Windows stop this in the ease of use? Um, so it's something that um, I have not seen uh, Microsoft combat any of the uh, actual anti-typefisting or any of the hypervisor inter intervention. That's something where it also does a lot of really, really cool stuff like blocking um, some of the hit attacks, like human interface de device attacks. It uh, blocks like some of the bash bunny attacks uh, because it basically hijacks any input, um, quite literally any input, unless if it's um, a pre-detected device. So and you can also uh, have it released. So it's a very, very cool concept and yeah, I'm excited to see people's feedback on it and yeah, be able to grow it and see what other people do and maybe other people can clean up the code. There's a lot better programmers out there for me, so. And yeah, basically um, blocking outputs from your phone, um, there's a couple programs out there that um, uh, are pretty nice that you don't actually have to root your phone, which is uh, amazing. Because I know several years ago if you wanted to delete uh, the foot, like, I know there's some guys that are computer guys and football guys, but I have no interest at all in the NFL or NASCAR or some of the other stuff they've loaded on my phones. And it's just nice to have, be able to have, uh, yeah, uh, basically free ways to get rid of a lot of that information. So, and um, yeah, so you can generate, um, also there's um, a lot of applications that'll read 50 SMS messages a day or they'll read 50 emails. And uh, they have their NDG license agreement or EULA 50, uh, where they have the, they basically read your emails so that they can better tailor uh, either your typing or your auto completion. They'll give you a lot of examples like that, but it's uh, most likely for other uses. So yeah, and airplane mode, um, working on making, uh, I have an HTC one or HTC 10 now, and I, I did a PRL hack, so it actually doesn't attach to uh, fake, uh, fake cell phone towers. And also I'm having a DEF CON mode, and I'm sure a couple other people have the, the switch on the side of their laptop that they used as DEF CON mode before, but yeah, basically it turns off your radios, does not allow you to turn off your radios, it reminds you a week before to change all your one-time passwords, call in information, so. And yeah, I'm gonna go over the actual hardware that I'm gonna be demoing here in a second, and uh, this is actual, look at the in-store tracking systems, uh, so heat mapping, so they track how many people walk by the store, and then they see how many people actually walk into the store. Where do the people actually dwell? Um, so this device actually, I uh, just ordered as many radio 802.11 compliant things I could, and started slapping them on an Arduino and it's a pretty fun project. I definitely recommend you build them. You can build them for around 35 to $45. And uh, it basically, uh, co uh, there's a collection mode where you can collect the beacons, like I was saying, for a Groundhog's Day type attack, or you can actually uh, edit your own text files and then you can pop in your own beacon information. So you can basically have it look like hundreds and you know, if you built one bigger than this or you actually got uh, full blown boards on these ones, you could actually build it out to the point where you could have uh, three to 400 access points, so, or beacons, whatever your thing is, and uh, heat mapping. Uh, so there's an actual threshold, um, so there's basically they track people, there's cl classic people tracking. Awesome, okay. Yes, yeah, so there's classic people tracking, and it's gonna go through, um, you know, actual infrared, it'll count a ticker, it's literally just as if somebody was uh, tripping an I-beam. So I actually built an infrared blocker for that. Uh, heat mapping, my actual, application, when you hook it up to Raspberry Pi, you can make it look like people are walking in a circle in the store, and it is really, really creepy. I couldn't use the actual software, uh, because I would most likely get sued, or at least get a cease and desist letter. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting stuff. There's some uh, older software that's really, really fun to see the reactions of it, so. And yeah, I'm gonna be going to uh, uh, the actual device that's going through here. 
So you can ba basically um, look at the strange responses from the, uh, the actual system and it'll uh, do some of the re-beaconing and some other device reactions. So, and this is the actual radio that we're gonna be demoing here. And yeah, this is a CV based, so yeah, they basically, uh, if you kill the threshold with a really, really high powered infrared laser, uh, you can basically, um, yeah, it basically makes all the actual analytics actually shut down. Um, so after about an hour of this, um, it had useless data. After three hours, it literally made the entire store black like that. <laughs> and it, yeah, it was pretty decent. So, but yeah, I'm gonna go into the actual demo here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna actually let it uh, lay waste to the actual uh, software defined radio, or I got a actual capture of the wireless packets, so I'm gonna go through that here in a second. So I'm gonna go into the actual demonstration and then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the Groundhog's Day attack and then I'm gonna do the dwelling time attack. So it's gonna jack up all the dwelling time. And um, on this computer here, I will show, uh, while I'm getting this demo set up, I will actually show you, uh, which was not that interesting of a demo, but uh, I'll do that while I actually set up the software defined radio demo, so. And yeah, I would just like to give uh, thanks to my work. Uh, my kids, my wife is very, very patient with me. Uh, Jesus, uh, my uncle Stacy for giving me my first Zenith Easy PC. Um, DEF CON for having me speak for the fourth year in a row, it's an honor. And uh, audience for listening to me, and especially when I have to bobble a microphone in front of me, I apologize for that, and I can't wait to hear the trolls on YouTube on that one, so. <laughs> and they already said I sound like Beavis and Butthead on my last talk, because I have nervous stuff that comes out, so. But yeah, follow me on Twitter, guys, and uh, definitely, uh, yeah, thanks again, audience. It's you guys are what make DEFCON, and I really do mean that. So, and yeah, I'm gonna kick off the demo here. So, so here we go. Skinny. Yeah. So this one basically is a uh, one of the text implementations of the actual uh, word profile. So this one is a plugin for uh, this application here, which basically, uh, it'll go through and literally crawl all the pages. I did not write this program. Uh, it's something that I am a huge fan of supporting and I definitely wanna plug it. Um, it's something where it literally goes through and clicks all the advertisements. Um, they used a randomness. That was something that I saw as a, a eventual weakness, but it's something where um, you can now actually load your own profile in there and um, you can build um, search analytics off of actual, uh, yeah. So it's basically going to go through here what it actually will track here. Let's see. Yeah. So you can go through a lot of the settings. It's an amazing tool and it's uh, very, very easy um, to actually modify. If you guys wanted to start injecting your own profile information, I'm going to be releasing the actual app for that here soon. So and let's see. Okay. I'm going to be powering up my radio here. And yeah, I'm gonna get my Cali machine going. So, one second. Here you. So I'm just gonna get Aeromon running here in a second. Here's what an idle DEF CON looks like. Here you.
there we go. And we, <laughs> of course my screen jacks up. But I can actually see it here. Yeah, we should have uh, SSIDs start popping up and uh, there's gonna be tons of actual beacon information going out right now, so. So basically this is making, uh, like I was saying that there's the ground dogs, Groundhog's Day scenario where it basically replays the same day so you can actually capture information. That's why it actually has two radios on there uh, that are full blown uh, dev boards for radios. And then the actual other smaller antennas get passed off to a delay where they will pop the beacon information that was passed off from the initial radio. And uh, like I said, I will be releasing the actual code for this. So, and I'm glad my demo didn't blow up and you should see a couple fake access points popping up here and uh, there's tons of beacon information if any of you guys have a scanner on hand, so. <laughs> What's up? Hello Weston, nice talk. <laughs> oh awesome. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I knew as soon as I boot, <laughs> I hope they keep it appropriate. No. <laughs> but now as soon as I uh, booted up that I should have known people were going to mess with it but. <laughs> Anyways, it works really good in stores because when you walk into a retail store there's not usually a hacker waiting with a laptop booted up with Cali on it so. <laughs> but yeah, no, I appreciate you guys coming and listening to me talk and uh, yeah, I'm glad the demo worked this year and yeah. Thanks guys.